Hello everyone, let's start with some setup. Skip alerts. Chatting is working. Hey, hey, hey. Back, come play. All right.
Hello everyone. And I forgot something, of course. <laughs> Ah. So what a day, what a start. So I can hear myself twice, that's not good. So let me quickly check what's that about. Ah, of course I have opened the stream, that's not a good idea. Okay, so great stuff. I finally made it to here. <laughs> so the biggest part has been done. Because I thought I improved my setup, as always, a little bit. So what happened, of course, is that everything go into Wayne uh, some seconds before the stream started, as it should start. Then I needed to completely change my computer. My laptop is now on the other side. Everything changed. Hey, Deepak, great to see you. <laughs> and now I finally sit here and hopefully everything runs. And now my streaming setup is completely different to usual. So that's you also can see with the borders and things. So I tried now Twitch a little bit around again. So as you know me, I'm playing with Technic as always. And hopefully we are now a bit of better off. As you can see now, we have also there the chat notification stuff. So you can see yourself. And on that side, I think you will see followers and things. Uh, maybe I can also activate that somehow. Then we can see it together. So something like that. So I don't know how good that will be in the future. But yeah, today we have a lot uh, in planned, or I have a lot planned. So my idea is I would like to first uh, talk a little bit about libraries and frameworks and what their difference is. After that, uh, I have prepared a little quiz for today. I don't know how to activate that actually yet, but we will figure it out together, I hope. So let's see, it is a Flutter quiz where we will talk about uh, what is Flutter? What do we have for benefits from it? And I have created some fancy questions that will be rewarded probably. Let's see how many people we are and then let's see if that makes fun and if we want to take that into the future. For me, this is a test stream if even some people join and if not. So if you have questions, feedback, how we can improve, as always, let me know. Okay, so then that's it already. So. Yeah, I want to take a tour through libraries and frameworks today. And I know usually this is not a quite a difficult question, what is what, because usually we don't really care. But there are some distinguished points and I like one of them more than the other. And I was very interested to hear what you think. And so I asked on Twitter and on YouTube, what do you prefer, frameworks or libraries? And of course, both of them have a complete different context. But um, if you know what the difference is, is, sometimes you have a preference. A reason for that is, for example, why I'm asking that uh, is, for example, React. React calls themselves a library and not a framework. And now the question would be, what is the difference? And where uh, can you see a framework in action? And why do you need a framework in general? So if you think about a library, it is usually like a utils or a function collection that you can use. You pick it and with that you can directly start working. So usually it is something like a string modifier. You have a toolbox that you can directly use. You have a package that you integrate into your, um, into your framework and then you can work with it out of the box. So for example, HTTP package for Flutter would be one idea because it is just one package that you can use to make HTTP requests. But of course you can also, well, take something else, right? You can replace it with, and now I need good names. What do you know for frameworks, uh, for packages that you can use for HTTP? Um, Axios would it be for JavaScript? I don't know if it's, oh, it's, it even exists inside of uh, Flutter, interesting. Um, but this is a server, also interesting. So HTTP requests, so uh, I think Dio is a name, right? Dio, yes. So I can also change that to here and then we can see me the chat and of course the camera is gone so then i need a second let's see where it is so here thank you gg noodles so perfect you also know what i'm talking about 
So the problem is, where is my refresh change? So, no, it's just gone. Of course. So give me a second and we will have a look. Ah. So as I said, I had to replace the complete setup here. So maybe now, blink, blink, things happening. Aha, good stuff. So maybe I'm just a little bit too large for the whole development part. So let's see what I can do. Maybe I can move myself over here again. Myself a bit smaller, like that. So, great stuff. So, okay, sorry for the disturbance. <laughs> As I said, it's a bit uh, tricky. Uh, you can't see it even. Now I have to save. So, okay. So now I'm a little bit smaller here on that side. And yeah, so also here, some changes. Hopefully you can see everything. So Dio is one example for it. And I'm not even sure, but these are probably, or these are usually uh, packages that you just use. And it provides you with the, all the information that you need for one specific topic. And that is very good because you can use them to integrate them and you can directly use them out of every part. And libraries is usually something that you want to use whenever you have your program running and you want to have an easy access to an API. Then you have frameworks on the other side. And frameworks are usually larger. They are providing you with way more information and give you certain boundaries. So for example, Redux is an example for that. So careful, I have to use the keyboard, the right one. This one, yes, perfect. So Redux for, I think we have it even for Flutter. So Redux. And if we take a look here, this provides us not only some uh, some packages that we can use right out of the box. It even provides us motivations, principles, basics, guidelines, and things like that. So you have three principles and these need to be true all the time. If you don't have that correct, then you do it fundamentally wrong. So there is a wrong in that case. While you would use a package, you can just use it. Nothing is wrong with that. But if you are having a framework, you get usually boundaries that you shouldn't cross. Uh, a very good example that I had from my past is I worked in Angular. And Angular itself is a framework and it also calls itself a framework. I don't know if they have changed it over the time because I stopped at Angular 8, I think. So please be kind if I do here a mistake. But if we take a look, Angular is very deep and it is a real framework. Why is it that the case? Because things like, for example, the HTTP package that they use, this is hard. You cannot change that so easily. You have to use their uh, integration of these packages. And another thing that is a framework or what I would consider a framework is something like, for example, uh, what do we have else? Um, I had it in my mind seconds ago. So we have Redux, we have Angular, and we have, let me quickly check. I have it in my mind. I wanted to say it. Ah, I prepared it so nicely and now I forgot it. That's sad. <laughs> so, of course, there are a lot and tons of articles. So where is the difference? Where is the technical difference? And that's why I say it's opinionated. Another framework now is, for example, jhipster. Why is that the case? jhipster is a mono repository and they provide you with tons of information. Of course, they also uh, have opinions about the technology. So you would also use, for example, Java in their case. And they do it with a, an own a language called JDL. They have like how you create microservices. They, how you implement all the stuff and they provide you all the tools that you have to use or can use. And with that, you have the chance to directly start with it. The thing is, you can imagine a framework like a skeleton and a skeleton, it offers you structure. It gives you how the whole thing should look at the end, but the flesh, so what you want to have at the end, you have to provide. 
Of course, you need some things to connect the framework from time to time, but usually it provides you all the different things that you need. So, and these are just some examples what makes the difference for me. And why I'm saying it makes a difference for me is because the whole library and framework uh, discussion is a lot of opinions. So a lot of people have their different meanings and uh, there is no real definition of the wordings. But yeah, so and now the question is, what do you prefer and where this question comes from for my side? Um, my side is uh, usually at work, we um, create uh, architectural guidelines, we improve how we want to work as a team and create our own framework usually, because you have to understand what you want to do. And the question is now, do you like it to have a bit more, let's say dogmatic and opinionated uh, working behavior? So that means uh, how should a, f a call to the backend should look like? Or how do you want to create, for example, interfaces for your, uh, for, your, um, for your application? So do you want to create for everything interfaces or do you decide, okay, let's just pure execute everything directly on the API? All of that is possible and gives you the foundations or the framework and boundaries that you want to have. So even if you, for example, take um, sorry React as an example, and let's say you want to work with JavaScript React, and that's what you do, and it says already it's a JavaScript library, then you will have to create the framework for you and your team yourself. So if you use something like this, and you um, and React is not only the only example, let's have a look into Flutter, because if you take a look into Flutter, we have also the name, and here it's a little bit different. They call themselves a toolkit. So now you could ask, okay, toolkit is it again something else, but not really. It's a complete software development kit, right, Flutter? So it provides you with everything that you need to develop in all the different targets. And it provides you not really a framework because it offers you a boundaries. You, you, for example, you have to use stateless and stateful widgets, right? Even though it's underneath and hidden away from you, but you have to use it. So it's on some parts uh, very specific on what you have to do. Also, you will have to use Dart language. You don't have a chance to change that, right? But with everything else, you are pretty much open. So you are open to use the EO, for example. You can completely get rid of the HTTP part. And even if you want to get rid of the widgets, you could do that and create your own renderer possibilities. And the same thing um, belongs to a lot of UI frameworks. But how does it look like for backend parts? So if we take a look, for example, to uh, Conduit, for example, which is currently my favorite so, uh, backend part for, um, for Flutter development. At the moment, it's not really stable, so I would not recommend it for uh, a production use, but it's very interesting package that I highly recommend at the moment if you want to do some backend work, just because it's very interesting to see where they are going to. I'm now a bit confused because I thought they have a website. Okay, let's have a look. It has a bad certificate. Ah, that's unlucky. Let's see if we can remove the Nope, not allowed. US Arizona. <laughs> okay, so the website is currently not reachable. I think they have already created um, an issue for that. But this is also a server-side framework and it offers you all the things, for example, for um, a middleware, how to create a server how to connect everything up with a database. And it is more than just an uh, easy um, package that you can just use for your Dart and you click something and have automatically your calls that you want to do. Here, they also stated that they are a framework. So they are more than just uh, one or two calls. <clears throat> so do we have other elements? And we can see if we take a look into shelf, for example, whoops. Hey, the Cass, thank you for following. Sorry if I'm not uh, that perfect now with shelf, shelf? How do I write shelf now? This way. Uh, sorry that I'm not perfect with the uh, Twitch terminology yet. 
So Shelf is also a possibility to create web servers, but it is way smaller. And it tells you that it is a web, web server middleware and uh, encourage uh, composition. And also here, it offers you some kind of frameworks because you need to keep a specific way of handling information. But on the other side, it allows you to do whatever you want. For example, you can set up the database that you wish, how you wish it. There is no fixed part for it. And you can even plug more things into it. For example, if you say, okay, I want to use a router shelf or static shelf, you can install that. If you need web sockets, it's not part of the shelf package. You will have to download web socket. Um, WebSocket, you will have to download a different package for that. A very good question, the CAS. Um, I changed to uh, Twitch just for trying out reasons, to be honest. Uh, honestly, I use currently the Twitch tool here, which is very easy for me to play a bit around. And it's also easier to check for, um, how do you call it? Uh, how to, to, to manage my stream in general. So it makes it very easy for me to directly do it. And that was one reason. Uh, and it was just for fun to see if Twitch is also working for me. So maybe we go back to YouTube sooner or later. And yeah, but I don't know yet. It heavily depends on you if you like it or if I like it and how we come forward with this. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so much. There are any questions regarding to frameworks or libraries? Anything you want to know? Uh, do you have questions or have you ever used a package or library or uh, a library or a, a framework? Have you ever created a framework for yourself? Hasn't been used in years, so that's a good reason to start it. <laughs> Uh, actually, I was also surprised how much changed already in um, Twitch since the last uh, couple of times that I streamed here. Because if, I guess Deepak will still know, uh, some months ago I was also here on Twitch more and tried a bit more around and everything changed again. So the interface is different, the chat is different, everything is again different. <laughs> ten, months, 10 months ago? Really? Is it that long ago? Wow. You know, I always forget how long I'm doing YouTube and Twitch already. <laughs> it's crazy, like two years now. Yeah, cool. Okay, so if there are no questions regarding frameworks and uh, uh, libraries and you think you are all set, then I would maybe suggest that we go into that quiz topic because I would really love to have that quiz. Also, I would see uh, if I can make a ruffle or something. So maybe I can give out one, uh, how do you call it? Uh, one session from Andreas again. I think we did that the last time, if you remember, Deepak. So uh, it would be from Udemy. And let me check if I can somehow start this quiz. And maybe some people are interested. Let's have a look. Four people are there. That sounds good. I mean, fair enough. So let me quickly check if I can set that up. So there. There are so many different icons. Verified first chat, VIP. Wow. So then I can go here, I guess. <laughs> so sorry if it's a bit boring, but if I play here around, it's so this kit test <laughs> so that can go away this one select uh, let's have this and start the quiz working on it so if to view player names i have to ask you to manage access by clicking the quiz kit icon Okay, so there are should ah yes, you, so you see directly on top of me there are some questions I guess, or the rules better said. So let's have a look. Sure. I did. I have never seen them myself, so I will have to read them myself. Uh, is it German? Oh. 
Or is it just German for me out of some reasons? Wait, I'm an English browser, All is English. Why is it German? Ah, Twitch. Huh? Ah, no, my browser is German. Okay, so for you it should be English, hopefully. And my idea would be that we... Cool. So for you it's English. Perfect. So my idea would be that um, we played it one round. Let's have a look if I... No, I'm just... It's very big in my screen, but that's okay. So what I would suggest is now that we do this little quiz. It's not about frameworks and libraries, actually. And the idea would be that I offer you one... Uh, uh, Udemy, let me quickly check if we find a cool uh, course or something that I can offer for the winner. So, ah, wrong keyboard. So, is there anything you would be interested in at the moment? Let's have a look. It should work on mobile, yep, GG Noodles. Hey Amish, welcome, best timing. So the complete course dot language, yeah, that sounds. Let's have a look if I can get that one, log in. Just give me a second, still have to work. <laughs> So it would be about uh, um, Dart, of course, and Flutter, probably, but if you are interested. Okay, I have to fight right now with my computer somehow. Doesn't want to let me go into Udemy, which is a sad thing. So then let's have a look. I can do it here. So you see, I'm, I will have to show you the uh, current setup that I have because it's really a bit weird to work for me like that. So, ba, ba, ba. Huh. Which one is the right one? I have no idea. So let's take that. Hmm. Ba, ba, ba. Why is it not working? I cannot log in in Udemy at the moment. Okay, anyway, I will do it later. So whenever you have won this game, send me a screenshot on Twitter and then we will probably figure it out how I can send you the the, uh, the invitation or the, the win, more or less. But until then, we have to believe me that I offer you a course on Udemy and probably about Dart and Flutter and probably from Andreas. So uh, wait, I can send you a screenshot or I can share the screen with you. So that one, gameplay. So this guy, I don't know if you have ever get that already and then it was maybe boring, but it is the complete guide. I really like that one. And yeah, there is a lot of stuff inside. Build a command line app. He has now the safety parts of it, some functionalities, more sections. So it is quite something. And if we, yeah, it would be the gift for tonight. So, but now without further ado, let's get into the ruffle. So start the game. So let's see, it takes 20 seconds. So. Which of the following used to develop the native hybrid app from a single code base? Is it React Native, React Native and Flutter, Keras, or Flutter? So which one would you use? So I think you have to click it even. I'm not even sure. You have to try a bit around. I don't know how it works. Okay, so... So did that work? I have to check. Mm -hmm. so, so, waiting for players is here. So it could take a second. So, <laughs> so many browser windows that I have to manage here. Jeez. <laughs> so, reveal the answer. Wow. So somehow it didn't work for everyone, right? Not clickable on my side. 
So two people have voted wrongly <laughs> because React Native and Flutter can be used, of course. Also, you should use Flutter, I know. How can I answer? How can I vote? This is a good question. I thought the answer, uh, everything was there beforehand. So maybe we have to restart it. So let me quickly do it again. So I don't want to give everyone the same chances. And I think the question will be the same. But now everyone will know the first answer, hopefully. So ask viewers to manage access by clicking the quiz kit icon. So you should see that inside of the stream right now, if everything is correct. So, so if you take, uh, if you br bring your mouse onto the right side of the stream, then you can see quiz kit. And if you click on it, then it's getting started and you can uh, allow it more or less. I think at least this is how it works for me. Right, got it, perfect. So, second try. The same question, different answers, hopefully. <laughs> so, what can you do to create hybrid apps from a single code base? So, can you use React Native, Flutter, or Keras, or both of them? Wait, uh, image didn't work, or should I start again? <laughs> So, all right. So, but this time, let's see how far we come. I think you have to click it still, or is it, or do you have to click on the quiz kit? Waiting for players. So, yeah, I mean, Keras, I don't even, or I didn't even know Keras until today. So I didn't know that you can do something with it but it is a Python API. So that was very interesting to know. And all other parts, so it's clickable. So Hamish, it should be clickable or tappable in your case, if you are from the phone. Hmm. I didn't say how many answers we have or how many questions we have. So we have in uh, total, we have nine questions today. So that is the first one and I reveal the answers now. So, hey, three of you got it right. Perfect, well done. <laughs> so yes, React Native and Flutter are the ones that you can use to create out of one single code base hybrid apps. Um, the differences between React uh, Native and Flutter is of course like, um, they are so much different. So besides of null safety and the perfect programming language Dart and things like that, just use Flutter. I mean, who I'm saying that, right? It's absolutely clear, I guess. So I put myself a bit higher. So. Sorry, but how can I answer? I still don't get it. As far as I know, you should be able to click on the different answers. And on the right side of the chat, you have to provide privileges somehow. So. But now let's go further with the next question. I'm working on it. Let's see. So which of the following works with a small R key on the terminal or command prompts if you have started your app with Flutter? Is it hot restart, hot reload, cold restart or cold reload? Uh, let's see. So cold restart and cold reload getting cold inside and in the meantime now you are able to answer that's perfect so you have a downvote from one <laughs> that's the challenge you know you have a handicap so let's see we wait for other players and I can reveal the answer. So we have hot reload, perfect. Yes, how many of you have tried it out in terminal before <laughs> answering the question? <laughs> no, of course I believe in you, no worries. So, and I can now do that. Aha, perfect. Good, so that's uh, already a success, right? Four people knew what hot reload is and I really appreciate that. So let's have a look into the next question. So which of the following takes more time to compile and update the app? Is it hot restart? Is it hot reload? 
Is it cold reload or does it depend on the compiler? So we are talking about Flutter and we have hot restart, hot reload. We had that already. But where is the difference actually? So, I mean, cold reload would be also an option, but hey, <laughs> it took me quite a while to find wrong answers here, right? So I please be, be aware of that. <laughs> also, I should put down the camera a little bit. Oh. It's better. Okay, well, I read that as a cold start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay, a cold start. Yeah, a cold start would take the longest, actually, if you take it this way, because then you would have to restart everything, start up the, uh, the parts and everything. So sorry, Cass. That is unfortunately wrong. Hot restart is the one that takes a tad longer than the hot reload because hot reload uses the JIT compiler. So just in time compiler would be also something that we should maybe do in one of the sessions and talk a little bit about JIT and uh, AOT, where the difference is, why we should do that. But Flutter doesn't have a cold one. Yeah, that's true. 30k points. I don't know. I read somewhere that you can flex now in the stream, but I don't know how that works. We have to try that a bit around. But maybe the next time. I mean, this is the first quiz I'm doing here. So which function is responsible for starting a Dart program? Is it A, main? Is it B, run app? Is it C, flutter? Or is it for run? Uh, is it D, run? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I had sh I should have been a quiz moderator. <laughs> so many good things I know. So let's see. I'm really curious because all of them have their purpose in life, right? I didn't know that there is a flutter function. So maybe that's cool. Maybe you know that. And also very interesting is the run app part. Because yeah, there, there is usually a run app function somewhere. So these are the heavy questions, you know, later comes the easier ones. So sorry for that. <laughs> okay, let's see. So which of the four is actually responsible for starting a Dart program? And Free has said main. And I'm interested about the run app. So where does that come from? Or better, I think I know where it comes from. Adrenaline, yes. <laughs> The so run app comes probably from the uh, starter package from uh, Flutter, because if you start or install Flutter, then uh, to start Flutter itself, it usually executes a method called run app. But this is just to execute Flutter itself. Main is always for the Dart framework. So if you have ever created a terminal with uh, Dart itself, you will always have to call main first and you return void. So sorry for, for the run app, but we learned something, right? It's also a benefit. <laughs> Actually, if I think about it, it was a mistake to have the, uh, the Dart course coupled with winning this quiz, because if you lose it, you probably are needing it more. <laughs> but yeah, well, which of the following tests a single widget? Is it integration tests? Is it unit tests? Is it widget tests or interactive tests? But maybe this is also a solution. Give it to the loser. <laughs> Whoever lost the game will get the the, the prize today. <clears throat> or maybe I do two eyes. I don't know. Um, one short question in the group. Does someone of you already have finished the uh, complete language course from uh, Andreas? Bisotto? Or have you ever seen it? You have done it, Mahamish? And how did you like it? Was it okay? Did you learn something? Cool. Okay, so it's really a great course. Yeah, perfect. So I think this is the Dart one, so the basic Dart one, and goes then later to the uh, Flutter part. Cool. Okay, so let's reveal it. It is the widget tests. So where's the difference between the four different testing types? So we have integration tests that are tests that are usually testing different components together. So, sorry for that. 
Never taken a course. I learned at the job. Ah, nice. But uh, have you ever considered to use a course in general or do you just don't like to learn from courses? I mean, it's also valid. So integration tests are usually testing a component with different parts of it, not only one unit, which is usually a method, but a whole part of the part, uh, so of the larger part of the application with different dependencies and maybe even with a database and end to end everything with the whole app, maybe in the complete part. Then you have unit tests, as I said, a unit, a very small part of your app will be tested. That is usually a method and you want to get uh, whatever should come back or if it should throw an error, you want to test if it throws an error. Then you have widget tests, which also starts up a real widget and you can pump widgets in the widget test and there you can test directly parts of your application, so widgets itself. And last but not least, we have interactive tests and not sure what an interactive test is. It sounds a little bit like a human or a, a usual test that you do on the device itself. Okay, so, but I see right now that my mice, I, ah, I wanted to show you my setup, you know, because as I said, oh, I can't even move the camera. Good. So let's see if I can make that. So this is the one monitor that I that you see when I'm working. And we have on that side, the second monitor now where my computer, my Windows computer is on. Then down here, you have my, my my computer mice for the desktop and over here, the microphone. So it's quite difficult and challenging for me to show you everything. And yeah, it's not usual. It's just for today now because I have to uh, yeah changed it in last second, more or less, because uh, a cable broke and I had to replace it in the last seconds. It took me quite a while. <laughs> Uh, actually, Amish, I ordered it, so I, it should come in the next couple of days because it was a fantastic idea. I, I saw it also with the multiple channel uh, and the selection, and this is just the thing that I need, actually. So good idea, and I probably will have it in the sooner, sooner later days. Okay, let's go to the next question, and the next question is Flutter is developed by... Is it Facebook? Is it Microsoft? Is it Oracle? Or is it Google? Robert and Tada use it both. Ah, the, the mice. Okay. So I think they do a good job with that. If you are even considerate. So I really like it and I just don't, I really hate uh, cable bound apps uh, that, that it has a cable. I use now for the computer here, the Mac uh, mouse and you know how much I like that one. So I absolutely don't like it. <laughs> so, but let's see who developed Flutter. Ooh. I have the feeling that someone answers wrong with every on purpose now. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Four times Google. Yes, of course, Flutter is developed by Google. Does someone know the original name of Flutter? So what was the real name of Flutter? I didn't have that as a question, but it would be just interesting if someone knows. Sending to players. Where is the answer? Sky. Perfect. Yes, indeed. It was Sky. And then we will have a question for that too today, because when was the first alpha released? but we will see that let's have a look ah oh, it's perfect timing <laughs> the first alpha version of flutter was released in 2018 2017 2019 or 2016. Also, I thought about to create a video about um, interviews or interview questions regarding Flutter. Maybe that would be also interesting for a lot of people. 2017, is this a question? <laughs> I think I have to create a third monitor sooner or later. If I feel that here, it would be better that this computer over here has three, uh, two monitors and I work on one. Because if I would have like this dashboard now on the right side, I don't have enough space for the Twitch chat. <laughs> I 
Oh, really, Cass? If you find that one, could you send it to me? Because I usually are very interested in things like that. So if you could just, I don't know, uh, reshare it and send it to me, that would be amazing. So let's reveal the answer. And it's 2017. That's correct. Thank you very much. I don't know if I can see anywhere the points. That's something I would like to see, but I cannot. Or do you see them somewhere? Uh, no. It's not so important if you don't find it, that's also fine. But if you find it directly, it would be amazing. Uh, so. 2018 was a full release, that's true. But we are talking about alpha versions, so <laughs> that's the reason. Ah, show scores. Ah, there is the button. So, sending to players. So, usually you should see it now. So, at the moment, we have a winner with Deepak. We have on second place Hamish, we have on third place Cass, and we have on fourth place GG Noodles. I'm very sorry for you, GG Noodles, <laughs> but yeah, it seems that uh, we have a winner for the hearts. Total score is different. Why do we have such a high uh, total score? Is it about different uh, questions that you have done ever? That's very interesting. Never seen that. <laughs> so congratulations for that, because on total scores, you are an absolute winner. So, the examples of the stateless widgets uh, in this case are column, row, text, or all of them. Ah, that was just the current question. I'm sorry, GG Noodles. I'm so. <laughs> Uh, are you finished? Stop. Ah, you tried to send. I'm sorry. I have Nightbot active who stops you from uh, sending sending links. And uh, GG Noodles, I'm sorry. I didn't want to underestimate your <laughs> your fantastic uh, results here. So, uh, could you send it just via Twitter? I think that would be best, Cass. Thank you. Okay, so. Who won the examples of stateless widgets? Let's have a look. All of them, perfect. And all of you got the answer right. I love that to see, great stuff. Is that always true? Can you create also a column with state? What do you think? <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> Woohoo, lol. <laughs> So, that worked perfect. Ah. So, do we want to show the scores once more? And now I have to read it correctly because now I make this screen a bit larger. So, okay, so now I get it. Total score is on the right side. So, winner is at the moment GG Noodles. And on the left side is the questions. And Emish won this question by far. Not too bad. Not too bad. So for everyone, you have still a challenge today. <laughs> did you already did the uh, dart course, GG Noodles? Which of the following are the advantages of Flutter? Faster development, cross-platform development, or minimal code? So let's have a look. Really curious. Ah, I had to laugh today because I don't know, I saw a meme for Flutter and it was called uh, that a Dart is the mixture of JavaScript and uh, Java. And then it was a picture of an elephant and a penguin and they were combined. <laughs> it looked very funny. Don't know if I find it quickly, I will share it with you, but I doubt it. Meme, uh, penguin, and. Oh, or was it in the new fire st uh, Firestore uh, part inside? I think it was. So, yeah, it's not part of it, but I think uh, here the flat fire or fire, how they are, fire ship. They created a video about it and they made an amazing video about Dart and I think there was a part of it. Okay, so reveal the answer. It's all of them. Okay, 
I see I made the questions way too easy. Cool, but we are finished, I think. Yeah, it comes from Family Guy, absolutely. It's from the ARC, but I was just funny. Cool, so who won and who can I present with something? I think GG Noodles, right? And let's have a look if you got the points. And then I have to check out how I can, I can add you as a friend and then I will send you the, the course. So, Cool. And then I would need your email address later, but that's all good. So let's see how the final results are looking. Yep, yep, yep. That looks very good. Wow, but in general, very good job, everyone. So we have quite some good points. So GG Noodles, 100 point, uh, 100,000 points even. Deepak, place two with uh, 96,000. Cass with 92 and Hamish with 88,000. That looks very good. And I think for the first quiz, I really enjoyed that. Maybe for the next time, we will have to find some more and deeper and difficult, more difficult questions. And I will ask beforehand with the community and see how, uh, what ideas you have. And then we can work on that together. Maybe we find some very difficult questions that we could put in a GitHub repository or something. Ah, and you didn't get the first one. Yeah, that's true. So. I missed in test question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, GG Noodles, I added you as a friend and probably you can send me somewhere your email address and then we can have a look how everything works and then I can send you the course. So, well deserved, congratulations. So, besides of that, we need now a coding topic. I think I want to code a bit uh, because else I get a lazy. I think it would be perfect to write some code even now. So, um, I think I can do that. And what would you prefer to do now? Would you like to see if we work further on the uh, flashcard app or do we create something completely different? Or what would be your, um, what would you like to see now? Oops. So. I have to check that. Uh, is this overlay from Twitch? It is not from Twitch and it's not paid. So it is for free. <laughs> so it is from Twitch somehow. If you go to extensions, then there is something like quiz, Squeezly or something. And then you get that uh, quiz part possibility. So, okay. If I don't get an answer from you, I will just do something completely what I want to do. And you have to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> so in the meantime, what do we have here open? This is the capture app, if you remember. I think we improved that also from, uh, we have an update got from, um, nah, what's the name? Oh, I need a name. And I think if I, Minu, Minu created an, uh, uh, an issue for that and he created and merged it already. And he improved our Flutter capture even further. So we have a merge pull request here. Looks more like a capture and he showed us an image. So if you recreate that, uh, tab nine is I think language um, agnostic. So it doesn't care which language it is behind the scenes. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> and with that, you can use it for everything. It Actually, I tried it now quite a while and slowly it starts to uh, kick off like it it is a benefit rather than uh, stepping on my toes because in the beginning it was really whew, not that good uh, because usually you get some examples and ideas that you don't really need so at least for me it was like that okay but let's have a look at what um, we got here from from the capture part, because I really like that, uh, that we played a bit around with that. If you remember, Minu asked in the last live stream on Tuesday that we should create um, a capture. And he had the idea to create it as an image. We needed to paint it. We learned something about this text painter. It is a painter that draws directly on the canvas of Flutter and draws this uh, text. And why is that important? Because you cannot copy the text then. So if you remember, we had this in the last part 
And the reason is if we, why can I not get the upstream? Interesting, check out. Ah, okay, now. When you buy the pro version, you get specific training mode for the language you use. Yep, that's true. Uh, in my case, I have the pro mode, but in the beginning, it was still a fight. <laughs> and slowly it picks up what I want, so that's pretty cool. Also, um, because you have that local model and you have like a cloud model in Tab9, which is quite interesting to see. So, but now uh, I wanted to show you what Minu did, because the last time we had the issue that we couldn't tilt it and it was somehow still sluggish. So, and Minu improved that by far. And now we have the possibility to take a look onto how it looks like. And it seems that I don't see it. So why is that the case? Do I have, don't, I have the assets? So on my other computer where I tried it, it looked completely different, of course. <laughs> Hey, Nova Star, thank you very much for the follow today. And very good. How about yourself? So, and this is how currently the looks is of it. But as you can see, we still don't tilt the language and the letters. We just show it like that. And the cool thing is if I zoom or something, it's always getting reloaded. So you can see there is quite something going on. And um, we, what Minu did is he created four assets and four different language, uh, not languages, font styles. And the cool thing is every of these fonts is used for one letter. And with that, you have like different capture fonts. And that helps us by um, recreating these parts. And we cannot copy the whole thing because it is drawn onto the canvas. So it's not really a text. And if we inspect the whole thing, uh, if you have ever um, seen that here, this is the uh, HTML inspector um, that you have in every browser. But what you can see, you cannot copy the things because it is just a canvas. And on this canvas was been drawn, so you cannot take that out on any case. It's not possible. So a computer cannot just copy that over. It's not possible. So what we would need to do as a next step to finish that capture would be probably to add some random background with different colors. I think that would be something that we could do. Um, is there anything else we need for a capture? I don't think so, right? It needs to be readable at the end. And we maybe need a text input field where we can verify that what has been entered is the same like we got beforehand. What the heck is transludent? Sorry, I need to Google that because I have no idea. Transluent. That's a German word. What? No, what, what is transluent? Did I wrote it wrong? Allowing light, but not detailed sh shapes to pass through. Semi-transparent, ah, semi-transparent. Okay, but why would I do that to make it semi pre if we need the background image or something or where does the idea come from? Sorry, my English is sometimes a bit broken. <laughs> does I, I don't get it. Okay, so how would we do that um, in order to make that background color? I think what we could do is have a look into main. And at the moment we have this canvas, right? So we can still draw on it like we want to. On the other side, how did we do that? We have this recapture class. We created this random text with it length and we get some random cases. Get random case is a string text, random next bool uppercase. Ah, it's if it is small or largely written. Hmm. But how do we get actually, I think, string from char codes with that we receive the char itself so we would need to create this split map join crazy stuff happened capture text with random cases so this is the text that we want to show i think and what we would need to do is save that as a state somewhere and then we have to try and test against that one the test text custom painter is our drawer at the moment with our custom painter. 
So how can we create a background for the whole thing? So we could create a stack, right? And then we put the background underneath of it. And if we want to do it, for example, translucent or uh, translucent, or if we want to do it like a different uh, random background with a gradient or something, then we would uh, just do that on the bottom part. So we have the text on top and the uh, bottom part is the uh, background image. And I think that would be the best solution at the moment. Um, is there any downside? I don't think so, right? Because for the canvas, it is still a canvas. Um, you can also use like a column instead of a custom painter for better performance. A custom painter I could use. You mean here? No, that wouldn't be possible because we have this text custom painter that we would need to draw on side of the canvas because we don't want that the text is written somewhere. Because if it is written, we can copy it. So we would need to use this custom painter in any case. At least this is my understanding, right? So this custom painter allows me to add this painter and with that we are able to do that. So currently we center that and what we could do is creating here a stack. And I think a column will not help us here a lot. So that will be children. But still, as it's Flutter, we cannot select text. That's not true. You can select te uh, text inside of the browser. So that should be absolutely possible. Uh, I can show you quickly, but uh, it is absolutely possible. So now we have the custom paint. So if, for example, if I use just the text widget here and pass in this as a child. No, we don't have a child. So this one and add this one. Now we will see. We go to the browser the first one oh i cannot select it am i wrong did i tell stupid stuff that could be let's see i thought we tested it the last time when we played around with it that we could copy it but the text itself is also not copyable oh, now i'm confused so can i see it somewhere wait do no? Huh. Now I'm confused. I always thought this is now... Did it not work the last time? Try to remove the stack. Okay, let's try that. Ah, which brings me to the key drawer again, because then you can see what keyboard shortcuts I use, right? That's always helpful. But no, it's not selectable. Huh. Interesting. Okay, I'm sorry. Then, then this was a mistake by me. I didn't was aware of that. Um, actually, we could remove now the custom paint. I would keep it for now because we did so much work on that to just draw these letters on it. <laughs> and I would be very sad now if we just use the text part. By wrapping text with a widget. Ah, okay. So we need an own selector for that then. So if we have a text with, or we can just reuse that one. And now we need to wrap that in a selection, selectable chip, selectable text widget probably, right? Style text, autofocus, focus key, max line, draw, strut. Ah, this is text itself. So probably this one wants to have the string then. This is an own widget even. Interesting. But as you can see, still the uh, letters, the text um, we would need to create for each letter and own text widget now. And if we take a look into, um, we have drawn that. So it takes for each letter automatically the thing. So we would have to refactor a lot of things just for the same be behavior. And I think the custom painter don't belong or don't take too much uh, performance in the end. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, uh, let's have a look if we can draw a canvas or to draw a background for that. So if we think about a stack, so we have the first part which comes on the bottom and after that we put something on top of it. But we want to have something underneath of it. So that's why we put it higher than the other. And if we take a container and just color it at the moment with colors, let's say red, then we should already see a difference here. Yes, so it is on the top left side because it's not centered anymore. And as you can see, everything gets at the moment red, which is, of course, not wished. 
So now we would have to change a little bit of the alignment, I think. So um, alignment.center. Oh, let's see where we go. Yeah, perfect. Is Flutter explained live down? What, what, so many words. <laughs> so I shouldn't be offline at the moment, or am I? Let me quickly check. No, stream is still running. Or do you mean on the YouTube channel? Ah, yes, uh, the website is down, that's true. Um, I didn't know, is that somewhere visible? Ah, because you... No, it's just Flutter explained that... Ah. Oh. That seems to be like a problem in the DNS server. Okay, yeah, it seems to be down. <laughs> Why is it down? I No, the live one is, I think, the support button. Yeah, that's going to, to a different website at the moment. Ah, oh, yeah. But you see, there is so much stuff that you can do. Flutter explain .dev. Ah, this is it, how it works. Yeah. So this is my current website. And you want to support me? Yeah, that's one is down because that comes from Streamlabs. And I think we don't, uh, I don't do that at the moment anymore. Okay. So we have the container, we have custom paint. So the reason, or oh, well, we have one more problem. I don't want that this stack is going through the whole, um, the whole website. So we would wrap that in a sized box with a child. And here we have a width 100 and a height of 100. And let's give it a width of 300 just to make it a bit more boxy. And it looks like this. So because of the random drawer or the custom drawer, it seems that we move everything to the right. So that's meaning that we would have, in order to change that, we have to change it somehow down here, I think. The text painter layout, I think we have the X center Y times 30. Not sure if we need to set this offset more, like big center. Where does it come from? From here. And we start drawing at this point. So what would happen if we set the center to zero? To zero? Nothing. Interesting. Uh, so we have the width and we reduce it by the text painter width and divided it by zero, uh, two. So then we have I times 30. So why is it not working now? So this is somewhere there. So do I have to reduce it even? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, this is of course not the best solution at the moment. I just use it. Maybe we really have to uh, replace it with a text widget later. Hamish, maybe you are right. Uh, I mean the support button. Yeah, I have to fix everything in Twitch. <laughs> As I said, this is currently not the best uh, solution here. Not everything works correctly. Or better, nothing works actually. <laughs> okay, but in general, we have this. We have now the letters inside and we can set the background. And what I would do is I would create a radiant because it looks cool for now. So we have decoration, uh, I think box decoration it is. Can we enter here? Yeah, but I don't want that. And now we have, for example, the blend mode that is to create this translution, I think. All right, GG Noodles, thank you for joining. Till the next time. Uh, hopefully again on Twitch. <laughs> and I will not forget you, believe me. It will be after the stream. I saw already that you wrote, but I don't want to answer directly. I hope that's okay. And thank you for sending your me mail. Cool. So, and now let's have a look. We want to add a gradient. And a gradient receives uh, a gradient element. And I think inside of that, we are able to uh, send a list of colors and some stops, for example. And we will use both of them. Linear gradient, thank you. What I uh, saw right now is that it's just getting red. The reason is probably because gradient itself will be an abstract glass. 
And with that, we would need something different, like uh, Hamish already said. So we have the linear gradient, we have radial gradient, and we have sweep gradient. And I probably have also to change the name of the stream, reminds me. Haha, <laughs> I can do that now. Isn't it great? I have tools. Um, because that's cool on Twitch, you can very easily change your uh, streaming names and things. So we are doing right now the recapture improvements, improvements, uh, random background. So let me quickly update that. Whoop. So cool. With that, everyone knows that we do something different. Okay, cool. So we have linear gradient, we have radial gradient and sweep gradient. Linear gradient is from one location to another and then change from stops to stops the colors. So it will gradient will be a flowing change of that. Then we have radial gradient. That's the one with the circle. So usually you have in the center very hard and then you go outside and it looks different. Do one more kind of practice quiz. Yes, I will create a practice quiz now. I hope every three weeks or every two weeks and then we will do that more often, I guess. But it should get like a default value. Like uh, I have to know a bit better. We have to create like my, my goal for the long run would be to create a topic, make a short talk about it, like 15 to 30 minutes, like today with framework and libraries. And then I have a prepared quiz for that part of it. So it is more like a lecture at the end. And then we have always the quiz by it. If there will be always a ruffle with it, I doubt it. But hey, from time to time you get something. From time to time you, I cannot pay for it. Sorry. <laughs> but I hope that uh, answers your question. Uh, we can also do the quiz on YouTube. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh no, we cannot. Sorry, there is no no tool for that, sadly. I can try, but I don't know, to be honest. Okay, uh, but now let's have a look here. We have also sweep gradient, and I have to be honest, I have no idea what a sweep gradient is. Let's have a read. So a 2D sweep gradient this class is used box decoration. It seems that it is something that I just don't understand. So let's have a Google. Sweep gradient flutter. And they usually have this fantastic Flutter API where you get also some examples, but not for the sweep gradient. Interesting. Okay, so maybe we have to try it. But before we do that, let's just start with a linear gradient. I think the linear gradient will be perfect for our case. So, and I want to have different amount of colors with different amount of stops. So to make it as, as random as possible. So what I would do is I would like to create a list and I will do that up here. So final, we have a colors list. And what I will do, I will use the following. So we have the list of colors and I think I can create that now, right? So generate, and now we can use the length. So how many, uh, list colors what do we want to have so we can use the random operator again and I think if we have added the random how did we do that the last time so we initialize random and then we do random next int okay so that one next int and the maximum number that we want to get is I don't know maybe 10 no, no, don't want to push it too further, but we could also do 100. I think Flutter will do that easily. And now we get an index. Yeah, it is possible with Pulse, but it's very hard because in Pulse, I would have to create always new ones, Hamish. You know, then I would create a poll and a new one, and then I have to go to the next one, and that would take a lot of time for me. I'm not sure if this is, will work. Okay. But now we have the list colors we generate, we have a random next integer, and now we would need to create a random color. So what I would suggest is we use always a full, um, but also that we could change if it should be always completely visible. Hmm, how can we randomize that? I think what we could do is using this number times random, or I think there will be, there will be a good stack overflow answer for that or so how to create random color in flutter 
Uh, can we use an RGB one? Uh, we could, yes, there is a package for that, but I think this one will be way easier for us. So we can use random next double times this one to int with opacity 1.0. Interesting. So I think that would be the answer that we searched for. We could all do that, yep. I mean, RGBA, RGA, that would be possible. Hey, Menu, yes, you are late. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but now with the best setup ever, I have now the possibility to see your jet right away. I'm very sorry you cannot see me always if I'm looking over there, but hey, it's a benefit for me and it's a benefit for you, I guess. <laughs> cool stuff. So let's take this whole part here with opacity. I think we don't need opacity. We can keep that random. So we need a color and I think it works till here. And then let's see how we can use that. So let's create this color. We don't need math in that case because we just use the random. And with that, we should get our random colors here. Added some commas to make it better readable. So why are you red? Const ah, okay, because of the constructor. Okay, F2, and here it cannot be const either. Okay, so this colors list, and this is of course wrong, colors list, ooh, it looks like my monitor dies. No, now it's there. Uh, just a second, I quickly have to replug the keyboard. No, that was the wrong one, of course. No, plug that one out. <laughs> Everything went wrong. You know, this is technical difficulty by Flutter Explained. You know, do you think you get a perfect stream? No, you don't. You get always something is broken. <laughs> I told you, I have prepared a lot in this stream. I tried a lot of things. I played around with a lot of ideas. And at the end, nothing worked. Everything crashed. I needed to get a no new monitor. I had to switch everything. And now everything is green. I have to quickly check the computer. Still green, okay. <laughs> it's getting worse instead of better. So, uh, which cable is the right one? Do we try this one? Uh huh. It seems my HDMI cable has it broken in the meantime. Uh, is it better? It looks better, right? <laughs> okay, from time to time I get a fade. I don't know where this comes from. I have to be gentle to my Mac. I, I think uh, Apple want to say me I need to buy the new MacBook with the MX uh, Pro whatever to directly use two cables. I don't know. <sighs> Streaming setups. I think uh, that is always the hardest part. <laughs> I've seen the presentation yesterday. Yes, I was very interested and curious to be uh, to be honest on how everything works out for that. So now we can use the colors list right away here. And with that, we got now the different colors. And if I remove the stops, actually, I guess we should see already something. So let's have a reload. No, we don't see that. Why not? Hmm. What do we need for stops, actually? Uh, stops. We need a list, and the list should be a list of doubles. A list of doubles. Use debugging for check the color. Show me, show me the output. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we saw that. So what can we add here? I think the double needs to be a number between zero and one. So zero would be on the left and one would be over here. I think something like that was in my mind. So have a look. 
that stops how they work. Uh, da -da. Begin and end. The begin point is zero, 0, and the end corresponds to 1, 0. Hey, I knew something. The colors are described by a list of color objects. There must be at least two colors. The stops list, if specified, must have the same length as colors. It specifies fraction. The stop list is, if specified, must have the same length as colors. Aha, so the stops should be at least 100. But let's don't provide that yet. But somehow it doesn't show us the ideas. <laughs> Lol, very bad handwriting. Like another random area of double. Yeah, we could do that, but at the moment I just think we should create these colors. And I'm not sure if we see that actually. So I'm not sure why this is not working. So we receive the next double times that number and we put it to int, which is necessary for the color itself. But why is it not visible? Hmm. How could we make that visible to debug that list here? Instead of doing this, we could create a method called, I don't know, get or build. Yeah, let's create this one. So, and here inside, we just get the color list, but I want to debug a little bit. So let's have a print of the, I don't know. No, don't even do that. Let's just have that as an own variable here inside and create a debugger breakpoint. And now let's have a look with the debug view. Check it. Ah, the opacity is always null because of the int. Ah, I think that's the reason. So, and this would be, um, I think, opacity with opacity. Ah, with opacity 1.0. Now it's always visible, but we can change that also later. Uh, why is that now an issue? Ah, okay. So, adding some commas there and here. Perfect. So, color. So, we create a color and then add a co opacity now. And, ah, way better. Okay. So, with every reload, we should have now a different background. Horrible to read and perfect to not get everything right. <laughs> okay. So instead of creating that here, we could create a method for that, which would be a bit beneficial, I guess, instead of having this here. And we also don't need this. But I think we always need that as five or four. What I would do is actually, I would create again a random, random. So next double. <clears throat> and with that, it looks even more fancy, but at the end, what we receive now is a color that should have exactly, uh, yeah, exactly any kind of opacity. So, and then it looks like that. Try this. Color get random color, return color from RGB, next in, next in, next in. Yeah, but you create multiple randoms. Yeah. What I don't like about the having everything random is you do now three different calculations, right? For each color uh, or even four calculations, right? Uh, if we also set the opacity. So with that, we have only one, two, and even if we do it a bit more clean, I think we can even reduce that by something. So if we use the block pattern here uh, and instead of having for example, I don't like that we have now multiple instances of random. I think we can replace that. But I think we can even do that one level higher. So, ah oh no, we cannot because we need that here. Or what I would do actually is I would create a final random, random that we create here. And now we would reuse this one instead of recreate that all the time. So now we cannot do this anymore because it's a static method. Uh, um, method inside of the class directly so we cannot do that but what we could do is for example whenever we create this down here we create our method again jump inside replace this by whatever we have here and return this and this can be changed to an expression again 
Great stuff, changed a lot. Uh, bup, bup, bup. We can reuse now the random fact. We get this random again, next int. Why do we do that? Because of the generation, indeed. So we cannot even use their random. So I just try to make it a bit cleaner right now. So come on, Max, we built this with GitHub Copilot. <laughs> True that. Wait, means I can't exactly get it. You never need to code again, just create the issues. <laughs> yeah, um, GitHub Copilot is exactly like Tab9, actually. It learns from the code that exists inside of GitHub repositories and has there the examples and you don't really, or they promise that you don't really have to code. You just have to fix issues with it. And yeah, Minu really likes it, if I have understand it that, right? So, and sorry, we <laughs> here we cannot post links at the moment. Cool. Okay, so we have this. We cannot select anything. Oh, ha. Uh, Minu, somehow you manage it to break. Wait, uh, a night bot. Maybe I have it somewhere open and I can directly unblock you. Uh, let me quickly change also the view by using the mouse with the left hand. That's that's super weird. So uh, remove someone from the blacklist because else I think I have a problem. Can I deactivate him? Yeah, part channel. So just leave. So I think with that, Nightbot has left the game and you are allowed again. Or can I? How can a moderator get blacklisted? That's also very weird how can i now get you back so again technical difficulties so <laughs> uh, da, da, da. zuschauer in her stream channels how can i remove someone from the blacklist activities rollen i don't know if i can do that Okay, sorry, Minu. I think you blocked for two hours, uh, two minutes. But this is from Nightbot. Timed out Minu for. S huh? Yeah, I can try that, but I deactivated Nightbot now, so there shouldn't be anyone who get kicked again. Sorry for that. <laughs> so you can see. Whoa. Okay. Uh... Okay, maybe it's not. I lose my viewers tonight, but geez, what I'm doing. <laughs> I love this. Oh, I'm such a good YouTuber. I kick my own people. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry. I have so much fun. Um, I don't know how to people unblock. Um, so... Oh. How can I get rid of that now? Regulars, logout, giveaway, default, spam protection. Aha, here, disable. Disable, 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 disable. So, can you try it again? No, right? You get kicked L otherwise. Ah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no. Okay, now you are six. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> still not a good idea. Uh, can I somehow remove someone from a blacklist in this? Give me commands. Default. Aha, maybe I can use that. So, exclamation mark commands. And I think I can now. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, regulars, poll, game, marker. Hmm. No, it seems I cannot get someone out of the block list somehow. Yeah, unlucky. I'm very sorry for everyone who got kicked by Nightbot. He is very mean today. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, but anyway, let's work further on that. Please don't send any links through the chat at the moment. Uh, it's quite broken. Uh, no, I can't do anything. 
Ah, timeout. Ah, maybe I have to click. No. Can I get Hamish back somewhere? No, also his all chats are gone. <laughs> Welcome back, I guess. I'm <laughs> okay, anyway. So don't send links. I think that's very important. <laughs> so, but in the meantime, if we check the capture again, I didn't know one thing. So if I s zoom into it, it seems to re-render every time. I didn't know that into Flutter. So it's it's not that everything getting, but it's getting recreated, like the font size or the fonts are getting recreated by Zoom, which is very interesting. Okay, but now in general, we have a lot of things what a capture need. It needs to be random. It needs to have random background. It is not allowed to be copyable, right? So the computer should not know it out of the stuff. What we could even add is like um, now moving the buttons, right? Move every text. Uh, around so that we have it bro uh, somehow mixed up and <clears throat> I think from the radiant it would be great if we start on the top and go to the bottom just because it looks fancier but I don't even know if this would be enough to really uh, uh, improve against uh, an AI at the end I think we would even need to fuzzy the text at the end and things like that make it really safe because at the moment it's just a uh, recapture right and very easy one Okay. Ah. But what we could do um, before we go to the next topic is I would like to um, create a text input field that validates whatever the user has entered with the text itself. So in order to do that, uh, we have now this color thing, we have this scaffold. We have this stack and this stack should be my, in my opinion, in a column. So the whole thing with the sized widget, because this is our capture actually. And now we would have to move that, or I would like to move that somewhere because it's getting large, but we can also do that later. So hopefully the people coming back again is, or is it still broken? Are you still not allowed to chat? 600 seconds, ah, 10 minutes. Poor Minu, I'm very sorry. <laughs> That's really long. Uh, that for a test. So um, we have this size box and underneath of that size box, we would have a text field. So in this text field, I would like to check now. Hey, a new follower. Ah, <laughs> also a possibility Amish, to create a new account. <laughs> so thank you for following there. <laughs> okay. But now what we can do here is creating a controller, for example, and or we should create a controller. And if it is just a text field, we can also react on on change, for example. And there we get a value back and then we can value uh, check this value. So print the value. This is what entered. And now we would have to uh, check that. So we make a to do check against the um, the capture. So, and what I would like to do is inside of here, whenever we have entered the correct capture here, like, I don't know, X set, it updates always the capture. Why is that the case? It's getting re-rendered whenever we check something. <laughs> you are back with a new account, good job. <laughs> so I'm not sure why is this the case. So whenever we write something, we re-render now the whole thing. That's of course not correct. So that's interesting. Where does that come from? So it seems that we do too much things. Oh, recapture a stateless widget. Why is it just getting re-rendered? Yeah, exactly. It's like the set state is called too much. And the question is why? So something has changed. It's, it's even with each click. Ah, you're right. The re-render of the canvas maybe. What the heck is going on? <laughs> ah, nice. But it's always the same text, right? It just changes the icons. So whenever I enter something, it's just changing the uh, fonts of the different things. But it's always V-K-O-Z-H-I. Great stuff. 
So should we pay faults? Interesting. So wow. I think we have to still dig a bit deeper into the code, right? Because we cannot leave it like that. Oh, sorry, I got some messages. Ah, Minu has a meeting. Okay, that's a good point. So cool. And my wife needs uh, a pickup. But later, not now. <laughs> so set the font name to static. Um, I'm not sure how this works actually. So this font name is getting called whenever we go to this for loop. Get random font name. Okay. But why is this paint method getting called so often? Like print, hello. That would be a question, I don't know. So it seems that if we inspect that now, we should receive in the console our infos. And it seems we call this paint method thousands of times. And why? The should repaint is false. Hmm. So now we have another auto mod. Allow. Just put that random font method in the pen paint one. Ah, you think that is getting called outside? Okay, that could be. So adding it here. Let's reload quickly. Maybe it's. Oh, we get even errors. No. I mean, it's good in a way, but it's also very bad in another. Why is that the case? So font random. Here we use again random next int. But why is this one getting re-rendered all the time? Custom paint. So maybe you are right and we are and it's outside of the custom painter, yeah, but it seems that this is not the problem. We have this. It seems that the paint method is getting called all the time, even though that we say don't do it. And now slowly I get the feeling that this could be a problem with um, Flutter Web, actually, with the web worker and stuff. But let's have a look if this also works on macOS the same way. Because I think there it will be a slightly different. And let's have a look. Ah, oh, downloading stuff. Not good. Not good. Don't upgrade Flutter. I could also use it on mobile, true. But I think uh, macOS is from the performance a little bit faster on this device. So that's my hope, at least. Building, building, building. Go, go, go. But then we have random. Next int, we get the... Uh, not necessarily. I think the macOS is also different. Okay, but here we have the same behavior. Okay. Then now, last but not least, let's try it on iOS. Hmm. And then if this is not working, then the problem relies on us. And this is really a nasty issue, actually. Even though it looks pretty fancy, it is a big issue, I guess. Because we don't want to reload all the time. The screen size of that monitor in front of me or the screen size of that one? This one is now, um, I think, UHD, I think. And scaled up to the max that you can see everything. So I do, don't even know where to look at that, to be honest. So can we have a look here? UH, this one. So maybe you can Google for it. So, and here we have the same problem, actually. Interesting. So whenever we click on it and we write something, it's getting re-rendered. <laughs> and it re-renders quite sometimes. Okay. Wow. Lutter. Custom painter re-render all the time. Hmm. 
-hmm. Call super cursor painter super repaint repaint. When the change notifier called, it seems that you should repaint function is still called at 60 times per second. Is there any way to start? The repaint method aren't called. Are you sure? Uh, call be called as a statement of a constructor. But in my case, I get compiler error. It should be an initializer updated answer. Hmm. Interesting. So there is something wrong. And there is something oddly wrong, I guess. So we have this. And now he say we want to repaint, want to pass that into the super and add here uh, repaint bolts. Ah, this is a listener. The argument, uh, listenable. What is a listenable? It modifies its listener. An object that maintains a list of listeners. Value listenable. Value notifier. Okay, it wants to get notified by something. Interesting. I'm not really happy with that, to be honest. How would I solve that now? So one option is to create the texts like you said, Hamish, that we really update everything, that we say, okay, we use text widget with that. I think then we don't have the problem because they take care of the state. But why the hell? Why is it the case? I thought always this, this should repaint, should always drop it if we call it false. I mean, that's oddly weird, or? Hmm. Well, because this is getting repainted. Also interesting is everything else is not getting called, right? So the text stays always the same. Okay, for now, I would say we just keep it for now like that, but it is somehow still weird. So, and then we would have to save the state somehow of this one. Ah, what would happen if we change that to a state full widget? We have now a state full widget with the text string. So final, uh, not final, we have here now a string, which could be null uh, for a short time or even late, late string, that we have a solution string, for example. And then we say, okay, in this solution string, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, so and in the solution string, we have to get these parts. So having that separated. So this is the solution. Oh. I think we don't have to bar that. So we just save that. And here we remove this part. Good. Now we should have saved the solution string. And if we print also that one, so print this. And let's have a look. So inside of our whoop, inside of our Chrome, here we go. Now we should be able to check both of them and see which one is correct. So hopefully everyone else is able to chat again. <laughs> My fight with Nightbot today. So. No, still re-renders all the time. 
crazy stuff, really. Never seen that before. But is the solution string always the same? Let's have a look. We print like crazy, but uh, set Q. Ah, so you see the solution string is always the same. That's also not too bad because what we could do now is, hmm, what could we do now? If I want to validate that, I could do something like if value is equal to solution string, I don't know, then we do something red or green. So set state, and here we would set the state of, I don't know, um, we could do that very easily. So have here a pool finished, and it cannot be null finished or uh, solved is false in the beginning. And whenever we have done that, it's getting green. Solved equals true. And of course, we need a method for that. Hey, Minu, welcome back. I'm very sorry that that happened to you. <laughs> Minu was also blocked right after that. <laughs> so yeah, the, bo the bot is really brute. And the uh, biggest problem is I cannot kick him. So uh, he didn't leave the chat after you got kicked. So I'm very sorry for that. Ah, I see right now. Can I do? Oh, look at that. You don't have any problems if I do that. Huh. How to get back to block? What does that mean? Ah, you mean if it is solved, then it is solved? Yep, that's true, of course. The reason is what we can do is just adding here an else where we add this part. So with that, we should be false and true. Have you seen our newest bug menu today? That That is really the best bug I have ever had since a long time. So <laughs> I don't know how it works, but uh, somehow we always refresh the paint even though that the paint shouldn't refresh. So we called it down here with uh, should repaint with false, but it's still, I don't know, started to repaint all the time. So I think we have to ignore the listener at some point. But yeah, a topic for another day. And now we even update the state. It's even worse. So we shouldn't do that. Um, on the other side, wait, how do we create the text at the moment? So we call that late with a solution string and this capture is created all the time. So what I would do is we have, aha, let me think quickly. So that would be, aha, we need an init state. Init state, and I think with that we solve also a lot of our problems. So let's have an override. Uh, override methods and we have here the init state method and inside of here we would have to create some parts one brute force solution from my side color isn't changed and text is yeah indeed Minu, but it changes all the parts now it's getting a bit weird but because i made this now a um, stateful widget and i think now it's getting a bit weirder but I think we can do it with an init state to make it very easy because now with an init state, we can set the solution string. We can, uh, and if we have set it, then we just create this um, regex expression stuff out of it. So we would set the solution string once, and after that, we will take everything else. So I think we can remove the random even because we can use the default one. This part can be up here in the init state, so it will be saved. Uh, oh, where come the length from? The length comes from here, exactly. So we have to hard code the length here now. I think that would be the reason. Why is that now a problem? So not sure. Ah, because we have to call super. Super dot init state. Great stuff. And now we create the solution string. We use that later. How barbaric. Stop posting. <laughs> Uh, bro, why man, why? Hamish Ruffle. <laughs> Nightbot, why can I? How did I edit you as a friend? You are mean. And I don't understand why I cannot unban people. That That is oddly. That's the oddest part of the whole thing, I guess. Hmm. Can I go here, maybe? Mm.
I am studying? No, I'm not studying. I just try and... That must be read with an emotion. <laughs> so, uh, unblock people from night... What? I blocked... <laughs> okay. Okay, I see already there is a different problem from time to time. How do I unblock Nightbot? How do I block someone on Twitch? Here. So, how to block someone? Uh, okay, a block. Uh, remind you what block, okay. When you want to unblock someone, however, things get a little bit more complicated. You can unblock someone by clicking on their card as before and selecting, uh, but this is only working for very recent block. Problem is, if you block the person a long time ago, you won't see their messages anymore. If you can't see their messages, you can't click their name to unblock them. If you know what's the user exact name, you can type unblock username. Aha! Ooh, why man, why like this? I, I don't know what you're meaning. What What's the issue? What do I do wrong? Is it a problem with the set state or... What do you mean, Minu? <laughs> Help me! <laughs> unban... Unban... Hamish... T. Pancholi. Aha! Okay, now it works. I'm showing you how to read that message with emotion. <laughs> ah, boo, boo. Why, man, why? <laughs> Sorry, I I have to go to the theater to improve that a bit, to get my uh, inspiration better. Okay, for the next time I will <laughs> improve, Minu, get my dramatic into it. Okay, so we created a solution string. We have the solve part. We create this capture random cases. I think we don't really care here, but now how does it look here? We still get the update. If we write something, this text stays the same. It's just getting re-rendered all the time, which is okay, I guess. We have S S L D Y E uh, C. Okay, great. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> now unblocked by this account also okay fair enough so and if we have that we have this and underneath of that column so where does it stop here let's create just a container and we will use the solved uh, variable that we have uh, to uh, give us a size box I'm not sure if this can have a child. No, we want to have a container. Terrible for humans. No different for computers. Parfin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah, I think Parfin at the end, no difference at all. So we are not uh, done yet. So I think for a computer that will be very easy to read. And for us, it's horrible to write. <laughs> That's a pretty one. Now you can create a clip out of it, Minu, that I can hear it the next time myself. I, I really have to see that. <laughs> so depending on what we are doing, container or container, we have a color. The one is green, uh, colors.green. And the other one is also with a color, with the colors.red. So if it is solved, then we get a green color, else it's red. And probably we would also need like a height and or we can do that easier. We just replace, uh, surround that one with a size box. Yep. With a width of 100 and a height of 100. And it's even better if we move everything inside. So the whole part here, wrap it with a size box, please. Thank you. With a width of 100 and a height of 100. Za. And if I have it right, we have now this box. And if I enter now DG, oh geez, O S T O G T M S X. So it's don't getting green. The reason is we don't write it in big letters. MSX, perfect, green. 
Okay, so we got that. It's very hard to read. We don't have uh, uppercase and lowercase taken in consideration. Reason is uh, we can't because it's changing all the time. Why all in caps? It's a good question. I guess because when we create these code units, we only interest ourselves into the 26 plus 65. And I guess that they are all related to large fonts. So what we could do is just lowercase them and things like that, or we could also rely on the split map. Let me quickly think. The problem is we always recalculate the split map at the moment. Could we do something, instead of doing the solution string here and the split map here, we could take all of that and put that here. I think that will create a string for us. We could remove all of that. Now we take this solution string and edit it here instead of calling that all the time. So let's see how this turns out. So I think it stays now always the same size, right? So that's already a win, I guess. So J D H Q I I. <laughs> no idea if it's big or low. <laughs> Get it inside custom painter. I don't really want to get more things into the custom painter. So new type of capture in which font is changed every time, bad for both. <laughs> get it inside custom, the case is changing. What is the case is changing? What we want to do is, as far as I know, is we don't want that this thing is getting updated all the time. And why is the case changing? I thought the solution string will only be called once and this split map join will create the casing or not. It will take all letters and then get random case and this is next boolean will uppercase or lowercase it. So that was my understanding here. But it seems not necessarily the case. But we don't use that anywhere else. So this is the only time or point of time when we create different letters. So why does we update all the time? That's now the next part that we need to know. So print solution string. Because now at the moment it would be completely random if a user will answer it correctly or not. So because if you look at that, it's up, down, up, down, up, down, small, large, small, large. If it is changing, I don't even know. No, it's not changing. As you can see, the font is changing and it looks for us like it would be sometimes small, sometimes large. But actually, I guess that the font size is uh, triggered somewhere else. So if you look in the print console, it's always the same. So that would mean that MQVGAK would make it green. So that's what we enter. Do we change the font sizes somewhere? So we get the font name. And here we change it to different random font sizes. And that is the reason. So if we change the font size all the time, that's the reason. Yeah, but user will... <laughs> Minu, are you sure? That would be a perfect recapture change because you go into console and you can just copy it from there. Super helpful for everyone. <laughs> So what we have to do, and I think we are uh, happy or we are knowing both uh, all that we are not allowed to repaint that all the time. So why the heck do we repaint it all the time? So this paint method, we get the random, we get this, the custom painter, and we are not allowing this custom painter. So let's Google that. Let's agree, redraw with listenable. I think that's the one that we found. I'd expect that each time the listenable change or call notify would repaint itself as stated in the document. It works like advertised. I don't know. It doesn't work for me. Hmm. That's the problem, Minu, exactly. So <laughs> you got it. That's a good question. I don't know. So it seems that everything stays the same. So the state stays the same. As you see the colors, for example, the colors are coded inside of the 
um, the build color list. So everything that happens inside of this text custom painter gets redrawn all the time. And I have no clue why. So one idea would be that probably these things are too dynamic. So we have to pass in the font name that we want to draw, but that would defeat the purpose somehow. Also the random next int and things, all of that getting repainted all the time. It's not only getting called twice, it's getting called millions of times. Whenever I go into the text input field, you can see it's updating the part. So whenever I join that for loop, a for loop? But why would it do it if I go and also color change? Changes once really, but if I enter here stuff, ah, so when we set state, then of course we update everything. So if the color is not hard uh, as a state inside, I think the color shouldn't be a problem. So when we build that, we build that currently here, we would have to build that as state. So what we would do is creating a final list of colors that we pass in here. So I don't know, colors, finish that off. And I think this method could be even inlined. So we have this part, we remove that part, we go up and replace it here. Now we are not allowed to use random again. Why is it so difficult at the moment? So let me quickly do that. So we have this, we create a method for that. No? Why is it red? Ah, it's cannot, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it now. So that means we have to put that inside of the, um, inside of the init state. So we will have to make that late again. So colors is equal to that. And of course we find a better name for list that would be colors, you know, uh, generate colors, uh, background colors. So, create it. Now it's still red because we have null safety, right? So we have to say that this one is not final, it is late. So. What do you think about G-test slide capture? Like drag the slider to fit the puzzle. Uh, I really like them, to be honest. And I think uh, they are mostly used in the web. What I really enjoy or what I find the most benefit for the users is actually the recapture 3.0 from Google because they understand it from the user behavior, like if, how you shake your mice, how you use your keyboard and things like that. But it's very deep inside of your computer, right? But I, I all uh, like these different recaptures. This is just my try to create one because of Minu, who had the idea to, hey, create it. <laughs> so at the moment, we still update that. So the reason why do we do that? We create that once. And after that, it shouldn't be updated anymore. Uh, maybe I have to restart once in a while. Moving the mouse is the thing. Ah, we have to pass it in, of course. So jump to the arrow and pass it in. Wait, are you two doing it? What do you mean? Just make all data in the init. I think that would be the solution for the most problems, but let's have a look. So now the text should be, uh, the image should be fixed. That's good. So the next part would be, why is it re-rendering all the time? Hmm. The re-rendering is really a problem. So what we would need is cha having different names maybe. Was it last time already a problem? I, I can't remember, to be honest. So what happens if I remove the font family here? Is it now? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, also here it's getting re-triggered all the time. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, the color is now not re-triggered anymore because we have moved it up here into the init state, right? So that was one solution. 
So we solved one problem, but how do how do we say it? Like we solved ninety, we have ninety nine problems, but we ain't solved one. <laughs> so uh, I just want to move that a bit lower because I like that usually to contain somehow. Good. It's a dancing cat <laughs> doing the laola wave, you know, so like cheering up the whole part. Look at that, I'm moving with the mouse inside, it's going completely nuts. Great stuff. Okay, um, still a bit unhappy. So it seems that everything that is random inside triggers the problem. So what happens if I remove some random parts? So this is now random. I think that's everything that is random. Okay, so now it sticks exactly like it should be. But that makes a lot of problems. Could I create these text span text styles outside and pass them in? So I mean, what we have is, for example, the a real developer would write tests. <laughs> so I think if uh, Wolfram is at the moment watching, so it's a co coworker of mine, he would be furious how I'm working at the moment. So. <laughs> So, uh, we have the colors, that is that, perfect. And what do we have else? We have the solution, we have the colors, we have solved, we have this, we generate a list of numbers, we have that, we have generated background colors, we create these code units, and my idea was now to look what gets randomized, and this is that part, the text style. And we randomize the text style for each text span so for each widget that we want to pass in so what i see you hamish till the next time so what i would do now is i would move everything up so lift the state up right so what we need here inside is just drawing the parts what i would create now is I would create this text span outside of the part. And this text painter needs the text span. Text painter layout min width. Max width. What are we doing here? Text painter dot paint into the canvas with an offset. No. I think to create everything new and move it up doesn't make sense. It should be able to understand that it doesn't have to re-render. Why is it the case? PT. <laughs> Wait, we have this part here. Cause a painter listenable repaint. And then we pass in the listenable. Provide of player context. Can I ignore that should repaint somehow? Tried returning both true and false here to no avail. Method is constant, continually called. Yeah, indeed. I don't know. So whenever I have some state change, it seems that it's getting updated and I have no idea why. So it seems I would have thought that this should repaint method does the trick. So if we fix that one, it should fix everything. When a new instance of the class is provided to check if the new instance actually represent different information. So and we said no. To implement a custom painter, either subclass or implement this interface to define your custom painter delegate. Should rebuild semantics. Okay. Old delegate. Hmm. Um, custom painter. Um, not allowed to repaint. Let's have a look. But this is always the opposite. They have the problem that it does up uh, they, uh, that it does not update. Painting outside of specific size. No, that's also not an issue for us. It's 
sky center text blah 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 custom painter the class extended recreating yeah we have that when a new instance of the class is provided hmm. really this answer this is gives the answer uh painter paint method gets called Now then, let's see. Uh -huh. On the 26th of February. Okay, that looks... I have a simple app. Custom Painter, red circle, green circle. Okay, multiple calls. Good stuff. There are two things you need to do. Center. So we have that. Repaint boundary. Uh -huh. And then we have to return true. A poor solution might be to add a repaint boundary around the hover widgets. <laughs> okay, so it seems that the hover makes the problem. So that would mean for our solution that we would have to put nearly everything into a repaint boundary. Let's see if this works now. Nope. Okay, maybe I did that too much, so remove this widget again and let's have a look into the custom paint. What the outline button style repaint in the custom paint and return true for should sure. return feels so off. So where do we create all that? We have the custom painter here, repaint boundary. Never used that before, so I have no idea what this does. Aha, creates a widget that isolates repaints. Okay, let's have a short read. So a widget that creates a separated display list for its child. Uh, child. This widget creates a separated display list for its child, which can improve performance if the subtree repaints at different times than the surrounding parts of the tree. This is useful since may be triggered even if the associated widget instance did not change or rebuild. A render object will repaint whenever any render object that shares the same layer is marked as being dirty and needing repaint. Aha! And there is the reason. So it seems that our custom painter used the same render object like another one and then if it's getting dirty, all the things getting dirty. So with that, we let's see if this works. It it feels correct. Very good find menu like that. And still we update somehow on updating these things. So if I return false here, what happens now? Still. Oh. Oh. It's only on the first click. If I click inside of it, it changes one time the idea. So it's <laughs> it's quite better, but it's not perfect yet. G X Y J M. No, J M J M. So I don't know which one is which. So I have no idea. It's still difficult. Okay, but. So now at the moment, I don't have anything to switch my focus to, right? So that's an issue. Hmm, beat my capture. S-V-R-I-L-Y. Yep, green. No, oh, it's getting better. But I think that is already a tad better than before. It's still not perfect. So I want to know why it's still getting repainted from time to time. Especially if I click into it. It's so weird. Repaint boundary. So I can give it a key, but I think that doesn't make a benefit. This complex will change false. Let's see if that helped. No.
where exactly are you clicking is a good question so let's i just as you can see i don't even click so as soon as i start hovering uh, nothing happened so let me reload <laughs> so if i start hovering boop, it changes if i click inside it's okay it's just the first hovering so i could ignore the hovering but i think that's also not the best solution right really interesting I mean, we even trigger that it is will not change, so it, it should never happen. Well, the raster cache should be told that this painting is likely to change in the next frame. Painter and foreground painter are null because this flag will be ignored in such cases. Okay. We have a foreground painter and a painter. I think there is no difference, right? Let's say this is not complex. What will happen? Nothing. I mean, we solved already a lot, but it's still a bit weird. Still some problems left. Still it will rebuild, indeed. So what can we Google next? So we have a text field hover, retriggers painting of a custom painter. Hover retriggers paint of custom painter. No. Rep also with the repaint boundary. Yeah, we can try. Where's the text field? Down here. Slowly we have wrapped everything with it. Oh, but that looks better. Nope. <laughs> and I cannot say that this text field boundary is not allowed to I mean, it's not too bad anymore. So U, P, E, B, X, Q, and we have it now. So at least the first time uh, it should be triggered somehow. I think I would keep that as a bug report. Wrap the text fields with that to the column. You think to the column? Oops, okay. We remove this one and put it into the column. Paint boundary. But I think we are just guessing now, right? This is not programming or developing in any high sense. It's just testing and trying out. And I think we don't getting better. <laughs> but this is a very interesting problem and I really will take some time to investigate there. Oh, ah, the hot restart maybe helped. Just reload it quickly. Nope. Up. With a hot restart, that's yeah, still there. Okay, so let's remove this one. And I think we can keep that open as a bug request for our next part. So we have here a short branch. Exactly. Ah, there is an issue for that. I oh, love it. Flutter, GitHub. Let's check it out. Issue. 49298 closed but this is ah but it is closed right is it solved then rendering pipeline of flutter which is briefly discussed in talks i'm not the expert on it but here's my two cents in this particular issue we have been talking about painting stage simply put every object paints on a layer which you can think of as a layer in photoshop and then all layers are composited stacks together the catch is as layer is either not repainted or fully repainted. So if you have something that changes frequently and independently from other part of the screen, you make it a separate layer. It can be done by wrapping that part of the widget tree in a repaint boundary. However, as you would imagine, having too many layers also impacts performance. The impact by number of layers is more tolerable on desktop or mobile, but unfortunately significant on web which we definitely want to improve. Nevertheless, this issue is not specifically caused by mouse region. 
but generally every widget you have a loading circle that keeps rotating everything on the same layer is repainting 60 times per second sometimes it is not as noticeable even though you know that some widget repaints independently so don't let the paint count scare you okay i don't care about the scale paint count that means maybe the problem is that we should not wrap this one but either the stack or even the size box. So this one would be a repaint boundary. We don't want that this stack is getting repainted. And just to make sure, we also put this one into a repaint boundary. So we also want not that the text field is... So now the stack and the text field are different layers. And we don't care about the text box actually. So now we don't see anything probably. Okay, that worked. Hot reload. So I think now it's a problem in web because if I go into it, if I re reload the page, then it's getting rebranded. So let's have a look if this works the same way in Android and macOS because I could imagine there it works now. And here we can also improve a little bit. We can take that and put it here inside and remove all the other parts. So get rid of that. Clean. So, aha. Uh -huh. So here it looks a bit better. Ah. H, K, X, X, A, V, Y. Ah, perfect. Okay, so we got an achievement, we unlocked it a little bit and we have it now running. So I will create an issue uh, or I will create a solution here or uh, the first draft and then we can see if we improve that further. So this will be the, what did we do? We added a text box, solve box, something like that and now adding the parts. And the next challenge that we would also have to do is make it a bit cleaner. Currently we throw everything inside, I think that could be a bit cleaner, but we are getting better. I mean, I like that. Did you improve the repainting of the uh, recapture? So cool, cool, cool. All right, with that, we have pushed that up and let's merge that too, because then we don't forget about it. Uh, thank you, Minu, once more for the, uh, the thing that you sent it so that you also added your, not GitLab, GitHub, that you also uh, added a merge request and a pull request that we could add. That was amazing. Phrase CLI, pull by specific, exercise him. Use lints via package lint. Okay, it's something else. Great stuff. Got rid of my messages. And here we want to go to, uh, what was it? That's the recapture. Save recipes, no, no, no. Uh, capture. Okay, so we want to merge that into main, create pull request. And if you feel very special, feel free to review it. And after that, we will merge it. So if you give me a legitimate menu, I will merge it. So what I will do is I request your review. <laughs> so, and with that, I would say we are coming slowly to the end of the stream. Thank you very much for joining today, Minu. It was an honor. I hope you like it also on Twitch a little bit. I really enjoy it a bit more, to be honest, than YouTube at the end, even though that we have less viewers, but I have way more possibilities. So maybe in the future, I will be more on Twitch, I guess, in the long run. Um, let's see. I don't know if we don't get the people over here, then of course I will think about it twice. But at the moment, I would give it a shot once more. Let's see. Okay, if you have an op uh, opinion about it, always let me know. It was night, so less possibilities. Yeah, that's true. I have to get it a bit earlier done 
but I'm hungry now <laughs> and I need to eat. Maybe the next time I will be making it a bit earlier. Also, we can check maybe, uh, yeah, we can do it in the mornings. The problem is I'm working, you know, and then we can do it only on Saturdays and Sundays. And maybe, yeah, I will switch the stream then to there. Let's have a look. All right, in general, thank you very much for joining. Until the next time, you know, have a great day. Bye.